Hey guys, it's Jag. Welcome back to the arcade. Let's get back to just another game, Resident Evil 1 Remake. Now, you'll have to forgive me if you didn't get to see the intro for this one, but this is my Chris playthrough, and considering that I'm doing this based off of Jill's save data, I didn't want to spoil you by letting you see how many saves it took or the amount of time it took to finish that game. So I started right at the title screen with that data loaded up and we're ready to go into the game once again. Now I will say I was led a little bit astray during my Jill playthrough. Apparently the difficulties you unlock at the beginning are very easy, easy and normal. And then after completing the game once you unlock hard. I thought I was playing through Jill on normal, but it was played through on easy. So we'll do Chris on normal and see what the differences are. Resident Evil. I do have a new costume, which I could use for Jill. That actually looks pretty interesting. It's definitely not doing anything for her fan service. Fan service. But I do have two Chris costumes as well. And for fun, why don't we use the BSAA North America Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance costume. Which is a long way to say why don't we play his, uh, his alternative costume. Now this will be going up if I follow my current plan alongside Jill's playthrough, but I don't anticipate this taking nearly as long. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Found it yet? No, not yet, Brad. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about 10 people. Victims were apparently eaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. I mean, we've kind of already seen this, but I'm just kind of letting it play out. Maybe if you started with the Chris playthrough, you haven't seen Safe it yet. The remaining body of Kevin. Oh no, Kevin! No. I will mock it we mercilessly. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. A nightmare. God, the writing is so bad. It's so bad. It's good. Oh, are we gonna watch Jill fail at shooting? She's the master of lock picking, not the master of shooting. I like your bandana. Did you have that bandana before? I don't remember. Look out! It's behind you! What are you shooting at, dude? I mean, I say that like I would do any better. And then it's Nom Nom's time. Oh, it was Jill who couldn't shoot. Good job, Jill. Yep, you next for Nom Noms. Here they come. You suck. Hey, Brad! Where the hell's he going? Brad's not here, man. New helicopter, who dis? Chris, this way.
Enter the survival horror. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Jill, and myself. We don't know where Barry is. <sighs> is everyone all right? Barry. Where's Barry? He's... No. What was that? I'll go and check it out. All right. Jill and I will stay and secure this area. Chris? Take care. Yeah. So I love how running towards the big obvious mansion in the woods, the only landscape around, somehow they constantly lose people okay i'm gonna leave those uh ink ribbons there now as i said this is after my jill playthrough i am much more familiar with a lot of the puzzles in the game there are some differences but i should be rolling through the mansion a little bit faster during this playthrough than my jill playthrough so i would say if you want like you know more of a longer blinder playthrough start with jill and if you want, hopefully, what will be a more focused playthrough, Chris will be your thing. At the very least with Chris, I will probably know what's coming. That doesn't mean I'm not going to get jump scared. I mean, I'm sure Chris, especially since I'm playing with complete data, Chris has its his own... Uh his own monster setups but uh i see that i am only equipped with a survival knife so this will be interesting chris does not start with a gun also i believe chris starts with six inventory slots are you even coming dude come on man you gotta you gotta zombie faster than this my right, camera change ow nom nom noms Nom nom noms, nom nom noms. Okay. okay. Fighting without a gun kinda sucks. Time to run. This is probably the best argument against me doing a survival knife only playthrough. Already, press might be a little more little bit more difficult in general. And no one's around. Perfect. Wesker? Jill? Where did they go? Hey, at least I get a gun now. Will you take the handgun? Yes, because... You know... I guess kind of... Fuck, fighting with a combat knife? I'm already in caution status. This is going great. Okay, so now I need to go back and kill that zombie, and then later he will turn into a crimson head. Probably. Like I said, this is definitely a playthrough where I am more experienced in the various twists of the game, although it's not like crimson heads were a surprise to me the first time, except where they were. I did know that they exist. Now there are some significant differences with Chris's story, so it's not like you're just going to see a flat repeat of Jill's story. Chris's story has a different supporting character, different goals. It's 
clearly harder. The corpse of your comrade, Kenneth. It looks like he's holding something. The film that belonged to Kenneth. I need a video player to see what's recorded on it. We'll see that later. I will go through and I will show off all the files and everything just in case people are watching the Chris playthrough first. So while I may talk like I've already been through a lot of this, and I have, you're not, I'm going to make a point where you don't miss anything. And I need these. Yes, I will take that, and I will combine it with this one, and then I will probably nom nom them both. Oh man, balancing eight inventory slots was already hard enough. How am I going to get by with six? Especially with how this game throws keys at you. There's a corpse class on the floor like it was an instant death. What the hell happened in this mansion? At least we don't have to deal with crows yet. Now, where was the first key? I'm pretty sure it wasn't up here. Like, you know, I'm gonna not gonna lie. It might take me a little bit to get my bearings back. Because, um, I do think the mansion has changed up a little bit. Not sure how. I hope it's enough to keep me guessing. I'll put it that way. But I definitely don't expect to have some of the moments where I was just like wandering around going, hmm, what? Like I was doing with Jill. Uh, this corpse is gone. Oh no, there he is. It's locked from the other side. Hey, corpse. You have fun over there. I mostly just wanted to go get those green herbs. I'm glad that those were put back where I remembered where they were. I need to find an item box. That's going to be kind of my first priority, especially now that I've picked up these ink ribbons. An item box, especially with six inventory slots, is going to be really, really, really important to locate and secure. But I should be able to get the map at least over here across the hallway. I actually did not know Chris did not start with a gun. That feels like a, kind of a giant finger. I wonder if maybe he didn't start with a gun because it was my second playthrough. Which typically is always tries to be harder than the first. Alright, let's see if I can do this. Just like this. go ahead and I think that actually might be the key right there but before we trigger this zombo if he does come out I want to go ahead and get them out just because this puzzle is kind of a pain in the butt there we go and map there's a the map take it yes and that's a rather familiar looking area we have several locked doors and several unlocked doors. Thank goodness that it actually does tell you if you're paying attention which doors are locked and which are unlocked. I still wish they would tell you which... Okay, this is the dagger. Which was unlocked by which key? Emergency evade. Using defensive items such as daggers will allow you to escape momentarily when grabbed by an enemy. However, you will not be able to escape when the enemy grabs you from behind. To equip a defensive item, go to the status screen and then select an item from the defensive item menu, then select the equip command. If your defensive item mode is set to manual in the controller settings, you must plus press ZL to use the defensive item. Good to know. We're about to run into that. Right there. Oh, I did the little, I did the quick juke and then I lost it. 
All right, that's locked. An emblem of a sword is carved into the lock. I believe that's the first key we will get this time as well. Take a look at the map. It's not worth hanging around in here. Let's get out. Now, one thing I did not do with Jill is there is a way to squish heads. I didn't do that a whole lot. Granted, I didn't really like for kerosene through most of the playthrough, so I basically relied on fire. I might actually find myself relying on squishing heads as Chris, and I don't know how to do that. I'll probably have to learn real quick. All right, where do I want to go first? It pretty much comes to go to the west side of the mansion and hope for the best. All right, let's go. Now, those of you who got tired of me referring to the map constantly in the last playthrough, uh, sorry, that's still going to be a thing that happens because the map is actually very useful and it keeps me oriented where I'm going with all these camera changes. I do think that Chris is more survival oriented in that you do not want to waste your bombs and or your, your bombs? Well, you don't want to waste those either. You don't want to waste your bullets and your defensive items if you don't have to. So anytime you can dodge is a good dodge. We'll see how long I get through the mansion with that philosophy. I will be interested to see if I can beat my time. I would like to because my Jill time probably did take longer than it should have. Even though I was looking for everything and I wasn't doing a speed run. All right, there were zombos in here. All right, ooh. Couple of green herbs, I will take those. Hang on a second, hang on a, okay. I thought after taking an herb, I was down to caution status still. All right, uh, this is my only path. I'm pretty sure that corpse is going to get up later and be that crimson head that became so familiar. Eh, this puzzle with locked door. Is this the same key? It is. We can't do anything about this. So that being done, where do we want to go now? Hmm. Options are limited. I could go downstairs. I don't think it will do me much good, but that's about the only place that I feel like we could go and, and accomplish something. Although we could do something on the second floor as well. With a little bit more exploration, we will come in from the dining room area. That does mean that we have to go all the way back down. And around unless we want to take care of this zombie which I might not want to I could try to dodge him I feel like yeah here he comes I feel like it's gonna be safer just to take the long way pretty sure down in the basement is not gonna help us out at any point right now unless I say that, but there could be bullets. Now that is tempting. Also, camera. Freaking hell. I hate the cameras. That will always be a thing I never get used to. And I always bitch about. What's this? There's some sort of. Oh. <clears throat> That's my keyboard reflection. I'm like, what the hell is this Technicolor thing? And that's the. That's my keyboard, my RGB keyboard on the on the uh, TV screen. Go me. All right. Uh, I, if I want those potential bullets, I got to deal with you. I 
don't know how to squish your head. I'm gonna leave it alone for now. Feel like... Yeah, you got back up. Feel like this gun might pack more of a punch. Okay, it's locked. An emblem of a sword is carved into the lock. Alright, we can't do anything there. Trapped herself nicely. For no value. Half a clip. How do I stomp head? Nothing. Nothing's coming out. Uh, is there something in controls? For stomping head. Not seeing anything. No. Alright. I guess that's one of those hidden moves you find out later. It might be really important to avoid killing zombies as Chris. Really, really important. Alright, let's go upstairs. Now there is one more important difference between this playthrough and Jill's playthrough, at least at this point in the game. Uh, this is being recorded at 1080p at 60 frames a second to start. I actually had to fix that in Jill's playthrough. I'm not sure how well upscaling that in editing is going to do. I've actually got that going right now. Yes, I will take another dagger. Thank you. Uh, and... Since it's being edited for YouTube, it might not make much of a difference, or it might. We'll see. Maybe by the time I upload both of these, um, you know, you'll they'll look pretty much the same. Okay. These doors are completely locked. And it seems like so is everything else on the second floor. So, I could go get this diamond, but I would rather ignore it. This Chaos Emerald, actually. You know what? I will go ahead and solve the puzzle and push it off. Just so we've done that. But I am not going to pick it up. Yeah, that's how gravity works. It can just hang out there. Alright, so that's done. Alright, pull up the map. Let's see where else we could potentially go. The back door is gray. We could do that. In fact... I kind of feel like that's where I started with Jill. I needed to find that arrowhead. Where did I get that arrowhead? I had to have gotten it upstairs, right? Also, there's zombies out here. Uh, yeah. I had to have gotten it upstairs near the gallery. Yeah, it's been at least three weeks since I played through the beginning of Resident Evil 1 as Jill, so... My brain's starting to kind of remember things. I told you it would start slow. I believe it's starting to pick up because I need to take that arrow. Once I find that arrowhead, I know exactly what I need to do with it. And that leads me to uh, the altar with the book. I just need to remember which room that's in.
Um... Yeah, that's the problem. I need to remember which room I got that in. Sorry, Kenneth. Or Patrick, or whoever your name was. I don't remember. Generic dude whose only purpose was to fire gunshots and die. And basically split up our team. You know what? You're actually the worst person around. Oh my god. Camera, I did not miss you. I don't know who lied and told you I did. Alright, let's see what's down here. It's locked from the other side. I'm gonna stab you in the head. I hope I don't regret it. Come down here. There's the arrow. We take the golden arrow? Yes. I will now examine an item. From the status screen, select an item and then select the exam command. The details of the item will be displayed. I'll do that immediately after I pick up these bullets and then hopefully we can get out. Ah, you're gonna cost me another dagger. Alright. Well, I guess I'll eat that. That looks like a buddy that's gonna turn- that's already turning into a crimson head. He had very red feet. Alright, cool. Now I'm starting to remember things. We got the arrowhead. Let's head immediately out to the back. We even got some bullets. That was kind of a bonus parting gift. Also, we got the fucking camera. What is with this room? Okay. Now, for those of you who are wondering why sometimes I do a little dance right there, sometimes on the camera transition, the game does the smart thing, and if you're holding, for example, a direction that makes your character move forward, if you continue to hold that direction, the character will continue to move in the direction that you're headed. Other times it doesn't. And the only way to tell when it will and when it will not is through trial and error. Which is why sometimes I wind up in a little dancing fit. Emphasis on fit. Alright, let's go ahead and examine this. Ooh, golden arrow. The arrowhead looks like it can be removed. Take it off. Arrowhead. Fantastic. The arrowhead is made from peridot. Sometimes referred to as a poor man's emerald. You know, if Peridot could be as clear and as green as Emerald, it would probably be worth a lot more. Maybe not as much as Emerald, but it would definitely be more desirable in my book. Either way, now we can finally solve the first puzzle, get our first key. Yeah, it did take an entire episode, but... What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Kind of wondering how this is gonna handle this recording I'm handling I'm uh, rendering right now is gonna handle being up framed from Oh good I ran directly into you uh 30 frames a second 60 I'm not even sure it can handle it but I figured I would try Good god dude Leave me alone. Alright, there's the grave. <sighs> Zombies guarding the shotgun shells. A tomb engraved with the picture of an angel. There is an indentation in the shape of an arrowhead. I happen to have one of those. Let's use it. Kerchonk. And that opens the grave. In we get. Let's run directly away from all zombies. I bet I have more deaths as Chris than I did as Jill. I bet that's a certainty. A book is fitted perfectly in the indentation. Will you take the book of curses? Yes. 
I will now open the Book of Curses and I will actually use this herb. Use. Uh, it's not necessary. Alright. Examine. Hey! There's a key embedded on the back cover. Will you remove it? Absolutely. You got the mansion key. Book of Curses. Book of Curses. The four masks. A mask that speaks no evil, a mask that smells no evil, a mask that sees no evil, a mask that cannot speak, smell, or see evil. When all four fall into place, evil will awaken. So that's our goal. We need to go find four masks, which I'm really going to love doing with this even more limited inventory. Let's examine it. Hey, there's an engraving of a sword. We got the sword key. Also, we are already hurting for bullets. It's definitely going to be more imperative for Chris to maintain uh, his survival part of survival horror. Is that zombie coming down the stairs? I distinctly heard a zombie. Camera, I swear to God. Can I stomp on your head? Really need to figure out how to do that. I'm going to do that between episodes. Regardless, with the first key in our possession, I believe it's time to save the game and fight our way towards probably our first item box. Because I'm going to need to start storing some of these things. And hopefully... Some nice person supplies me with goodies. Because otherwise Chris is going to be far more difficult than Jill was. Which I'm glad I'm doing this second in that case. But anyways, we're going to call it an episode here. Thank you for coming out and joining me today. I always appreciate that. If you enjoyed what you saw, give me that thumbs up. Leave me comments if you got them. Subscribe if you want to see more. It's going up every day in October alongside the chill playthrough. So, thanks again for watching, and you guys have a great day. Later.